start to lift. Are you going to put a cover on it? Yeah. Crocodile, Dad. Oh, that's right. You got that crocodile cover. Yeah. Uh, I love it. I love it. I've got me some luxurious crocodile skin. Ha! It's vinyl. Look at that. <laughs> Don't kill crocodiles. So we got this crocodile vinyl. It's brought to you by a lovely subscriber to this channel. I probably made a couple mistakes on this. I very likely have made some mistakes because you know that's how I do stuff. Especially when I'm trying something new. I tend to make lots of mistakes. And so this upholstery stuff is completely new to me. I've never upholstered anything in my life. Not a chair, not nothing. This is marine vinyl, which is not very stretchy. So that is problem number one. The less stretchy it is, the more difficult it's going to be to pull around corners and stuff. So there's other types of vinyl, right? There's, there's four-way and there's two-way stretch vinyl. So ones that stretch this way and that way, or there's like two-way, and then the other ones that stretch this way and that way in addition, and those are four-way. And so the stretchier it is, the easier it will be to work with. I got the marine grade stuff, I forget why, because it was like waterproof or whatever, I thought it'd be more durable, um, because it's an exterior, I'll be riding this thing in the rain and all kinds of elements and the UV and every, all that stuff, so I thought it would be better to have marine grade vinyl. My technique for putting it on the seats, this is also problematic. With the seat pan, uh, this is an issue here because the seat pan is fiberglass, and so my research is basically told me that you can do, there's several options basically for stuff like this, for fiberglass. You can use an air stapler or a brad nailer, kind of the same thing, supposedly, a finish nailer to staple into this, but it is, you do run a risk of trying to staple into this that you're gonna crack the fiberglass. So that is one thing, but apparently people that do boats work with fiberglass all the time and they do staple into that, the fiberglass, so when they're doing upholstery. Other things to use is possibly contact cement or just this stuff that I'm using, this upholstery glue. Just glue it. Glue it around the edges onto the fiberglass. That's one option. The other option is hot glue. I could do the same sort of thing and hot glue it around on the edges. And so I, I think I'm gonna be trying hot glue on this. But basically my approach to this, I'm gonna glue it onto the top here with my upholstery glue, the spray adhesive that I've been using, and let that, let that dry. And then I'm gonna see about shaping it over these corners. Then the other thing is a heat gun. A heat gun is key to working with vinyl. You're supposed to heat it up from, to, so the vinyl is 90 to like 100 degrees and that will help mold it onto what you're working with here. That's my plan, I'm gonna heat it up like this, let it mold in a little bit, and then we're gonna take the glue and try and glue this top portion down. We'll let that dry and we'll come in and see about stretching it and figuring out these like little corners and stuff. And I'll probably be working the, the heat gun to get those around. <laughs> All right, so now what I've done is I put it on the bike, so to speak, and I'm lining it up with these little stripes, which is sort of my measure for where the center is. I'm lining up this pattern in the center as best I can. And then we'll put the heat gun on here and try and shape this stuff a little bit. All right, I've got the gun on high. Let's see what we do here. I think it's gonna be feasible to do what I want. I'm gonna glue this stuff down in the center first and then hope that that will help at least keep this center part centered. And then later on, come through and stretch this around and start hot gluing it on the bottom. And that hot gluing it, it's gonna be the key because you can glue it and then hold it there for about 20 seconds and then it dries and it's kind of the same functionality as a stapler because it's instantly secured in one spot. So I'm literally just gonna glue it like this. All right, so stuff is tacky now. Pull this over and stick it on there. I kind of do like the way it feels, it's kind of fun. I like the fake crock. 
All right, so about an hour or so later, you can see it is nice and tight up on the top here. And my theory is that I can pull this stuff sort of straight. And like, if I were able to get in here like this, stretch it over like so, I think that might actually work. Over here, I've got a teeny tiny glue gun. <laughs> oh, yes. All right, we've upgraded our glue guns because that little one just wasn't getting hot enough to flow the glue, so. Hopefully this bigger one will flow nicely. I've got my seat here with the vinyl partly on. I've got my heat gun. I've got my glue gun. I'm just gonna start going at it and see how far we can get. Stretch it out here. And then I'm just gonna hold that little section there for like 20 seconds and hope that that holds. All right, and then we're gonna move on to another section. So far, something's happening. Oh yes, yeah, something is happening. Hold on, it's not sticking. It's not sticking to the fiberglass or the seat, which is, it kind of works in that I'm able to shape it over there. I'm able to pull it and that looks the way I want it to, but it's not sticking down there ultimately. All right, my second theory, my plan here now is going to be I'm gonna to continue to try and use this hot glue to get it down at least temporarily, but I'm also going to use the contact cement because I know that stuff holds. All right, that almost seemed to work out nicely, so far at least, so I am going to move on to the other side and do that side the same way. First, I'm gonna heat this up and get this stuff stretched nicely. Then we'll go ahead and put the contact adhesive on there. It's partly on. I'm thrilled it has gone at what I've accomplished thus far. So far, that's how it looks. All right, so there's that. Let's see about this tail section, because I was thinking this would be the easier bend to do. I let this stuff dry on here, and it's holding very nicely. I'm very happy with that. So my next step is to do to trim off some of this excess stuff so that I can try and address this back end here. So I'm just gonna use some little scissors. I'm gonna try and leave myself as much excess as I, I can afford because I'm scared of this project. Glue this part here down and see, go from there. Yeah, then let's heat this up, the rest of it. Let's see what we can do. <laughs> yes, it's totally feasible. And heating it up, remember, it stretches it out and then it sort of, as it cools, it sort of just adapts to this new shape. Look at that, haha, <laughs> awesome. Mm. 
So that one just didn't grab as much for whatever reason, but I think it's shaped well. And now I'm gonna go ahead and glue this down. And then after it dries, I'll come in and like trim this stuff up a little bit more and do some more additional gluing. There we go, there's the whole thing in the back. So hopefully that sticks and works and stays that way. And then I'll come, my basic plan is to come through, I'm gonna trim off these little pleats, maybe apply more glue if I need to, whatever, and that's it. I think it's done. All right, let's move on to the front, which I definitely need, need to trim up. Because this has got a curve, it's like a U shape going in here. You can see right in here, sort of U shapes in there. So this has got to come up in through here. But yeah, I definitely, I think I'm gonna need a relief cut like right in here at least. And if I cut this little flap out in the middle that I now have, should have somewhere, should be getting somewhere. So I've managed to get this stuff stretched pretty good over here so that it will form fit. My next step is basically go ahead and trim off all this stuff here and get that so that it fits closer. All right, so I've, did this, I've done the same technique where I heated it and I shaped this corner here and that's where it's all bunched up on the inside. I need to go through and trim that down. Um, I still haven't glued that, I just heated it. I'm gonna do the same thing to this guy. I'm just testing it to see how hot it is. It should be, it should be pretty warm, but not. it shouldn't be burning my hand though. It should be hot, but not burning my hand basically. I wanna be able to handle this. So I'm letting it cool down. There's that one. There's that corner. So, I mean, now you can start to see how the seat is looking. And hopefully it will stay this way and I'm pretty happy with it. There's some stuff I could improve upon, for sure, but I am absolutely stoked that it came out this well. Now that I've done it once, I would, you know, there's stuff I could go back, I would try to make better next time, but I'm absolutely thrilled that it came out this well. Now I've, I've learned a whole bunch, because this, this was a one of those things that I, I was not looking forward to doing this because I hadn't done it before and it seemed intimidating. It seemed daunting. It seemed like it seemed like there was a very slim chance that I would have a, a decent product at the end, but it turned out much better than I anticipated. So I'm, I'm really happy. All right, so from here, I'm just gonna go ahead. I'm gonna glue this stuff down, trim these up, and then we'll, I'll show you what we end up with. All right, so and then here we are all finished up. This is the final product. I hope, I hope this all holds, uh, these all, stick on here forever and ever and I never have to worry about this stuff again. The other side that we were working on a minute ago. So there it is all flattened out. And for those that want to know how I flatten those pleats out, it's basically I cut them in half. Uh, what I did was because I already had glue adhesive on there, I was able to push them together as tightly as possible and bend them over to the side and you've got a nice neat little triangle there basically and I would cut along one seam on one side and remove a whole side of the triangle. Then I glued the remaining side of the triangle down onto the seat pan. And that essentially removed 50% of the material and made it much flatter. So that's it for this video. Thanks very much for watching. Keep on wrenching and we'll see you next time.